Well, good morning, Interbet fans, and welcome to the preview for uh, Grable. We are on the Polycrack Wednesday, the 10th of March, and um, we keep seeing things. We've got an eight race program. We keep seeing um, comments on social media and Facebook and all the racing pages about how uh, disruptive this uh, draw system is at Grable, and today is no difference. When you get these type of races, where uh, you've got uh, mirror rated races and uh, novice plates uh, and horses that are really well in uh, sort of down the bottom of the numbers of the race card. It makes no sense. It, it really does not help anyone in racing this uh, draw number thing. And it could so easily be uh, straightened out whereby uh, you can still have the numbers, uh, colors and whatever, but uh, the horses should be from the top weight down to bottom weight, which is how we we know racing, and uh, there's no reason why it should change. So that's a thought for everyone out there. The second point is um, sectional timing. Uh, if I have anything to do with the new regime, one of the first things we will do is uh, put in sectional timing. I really believe it is vitally important. It shows you exactly how the fractions are run. And as we saw in the, the last Polytrack meeting, uh, in fact, on Sunday at Gravel, it was very interesting. The, the races that went uh, slow according to the sections, and I sat and did some research into it, um, the front runners kept on going. And the first race where they uh, went like the clappers, uh, everyone trying to get a good position, trying to get over, and they went very fast. Horses came from way off the pace, so it just shows you, it does ruin the form book and makes it very difficult for one to work out where one's going to put one's money, especially when you look at a card like this. But let's kick off with this race card. It's uh, five to one is the first race. It's a maiden juvenile play, 1,000 meters. And the horse that's run uncomplicated certainly looks to have um, a very good chance of winning it. But you've got to go and have a look at the first time. There's been plenty of money for Vegas Gold, um, which is uh, Lyle Hewitson's ride number three on the card. Been backed in this one, and it um, certainly looks like it obviously can run. The comment wasn't uh, that uh, encouraging, but uh, you've got to have a take that on face value and have a close look. What are the rest? The only other horse that's run is she's a kind of magic and had a jockey on last time. Now gets a four kilogram claimer, and he's very good value, Gabriel Peterson, for his four kil kilogram claim. And um, I'm going to have a look at them go down before I take a bar pot and I'll be at the races today. It's going to be fun going and having a look and chatting to a few of our old mates and catching up with what's going on on the track. Race two, information that uh, novice plate and they go 1200 meters. Well, the best weighted horse is here is Dandola. And he has gone well on the poly. Uh, he's completely lost his way. He gets a Grella, might be a, uh, a good jockey for him because I think he's a type of horse, he's very uptight and I think he needs someone just to keep him relaxed, keep him calm. But it's no cut, not cut and dried. Higher Purpose has been rested and gelded. He gets a Blinkers, which is a big, big plus. It means that the stable really think he's got a chance of giving him every chance of winning. He gets Warren Kennedy as well, that's number one. Tromso beats them all on form, has them all stone cold, and he should be the right horse. Three good runs, course and distance suited, everything's right with him. But then um, Canadian Bolt comes into the race with a chance he needed the last runner might improve. And then Mike de Kock back in Durban, he's had uh, two runners that have run unplaced so far in his little uh, trips down here and inherit the rain uh, uh, is the favorite and uh, maybe deserves to be favorite, but it will be interesting to see how he goes. The soft falling rains do go on the poly, so Luke Ferraris gets a ride on him, but there's a whole different kettle of fish. He's also jump and go, they're not going to play around. Race three, maiden plate, uh, 1200 meters, and uh, you've got to go with Cupid's song here, so ahead of the speed rating, gets the blinkers, the blinkers improved it last time, Lyle Hudson, lots to like about it. Shamusi, I've been with this a couple of times, Shamusi, and I think he'll go well here. Um, he, his profile doesn't really fit anything, but I think this horse can run a little bit. And I know Wendy Whitehead's got a curve ball that goes very well on the poly track. So I think Shamusi might be a runner here. Big danger to both of them, Master Dancer. Back on the poly, two very good runs on the poly, two, uh, three and four runs ago. Um, gets and Guani, uh, so he probably rides all his work in the morning and knows the horse, so he's got to go into the play. And then Didi got some sort of chance. Race four, 
Maiden Plate fillies and mares, 1600 meters, and this is not an easy race. Top Me Up Polly was my immediate first choice. I thought this is the right one. Lyle Yurtson aboard it, blinkers on it, has run two very good races, gets a draw, lots to like about Top Me Up Polly. Then I started having a look and Shape of View has run some good races, but never been on the Polly. So that's the question mark with Shape of View, but its form is very good. Tivoli Gardens needed this last start. Number five on the card, Andre Nell, Keegan DeMello. You know they've teamed up and when uh, Nell puts um, Keegan DeMello on, you know that the horse has got a chance. So that goes into all the play. Miss Missouri, number three, uh, needed this uh, last run and runs on. So that might suit Miss Missouri and I think she'll go well. And then loving the victory, I think this will improve as well. Uh, the Blinkers improved it last time keeps looking like it's improving and definitely should go better over this type of trip to 1600 meters. So one of those races, quite iffy, uh, and I think we'll get to the easier ones later. Race five, maiden plate fillies and mares, 1900 meters. Well, it's very hard to look past Emerald Palace. Got a lot to, lot to like about them. They put the earmuffs on. Gareth Van Zell, Warren Kennedy, the old firm team up. Um, this is a big jockey up and has run some very, very good races. The last run was cracking, cracking good run. So that is a top choice and looks like he, uh, he, she might easily be a banker, um, is Emerald Palace. So what else is it? One to starter, Keegan DeMello, Andre Nell, as I've said to you, be careful of the, those two. The find of the race is, uh, there are two finds of the race, five Kinski's tune. Um, I think this distance will suit this uh, filly. Uh, she always runs on and she showed a lot of pace as an early um, juvenile. Uh, she's had a lot of starts, but she's always been competitive and this might be what she's looking for. She's by a noble tune. They definitely get a trip, the noble tunes. You know, the Gold Cup winner was by noble tune. Lady of my life, the other find of the race. Lyle Hewitson jumps aboard this one for Alison Wright, number eight on the card and certainly well suited to the distance. And I wasn't unhappy with his last run. It looked quite good. Race six, Mary rated 78, they go 1700 meters. And my top choice here is Seamaster. Uh, I think this is quite a good horse and Anton Marcus jumps aboard him uh, for Robbie Hill. Uh, he's got form, he's got pace. And if uh, Marcus can get a, an easy lead, he'll be extremely difficult to beat. So what are the dangers? Well, just for the penny, I've been with this the last twice and it runs on really strongly, doesn't get into the race now. Surely, if it can be within a couple of lengths closer, three or four lengths closer, this would be able to win. He runs on extremely well, and I expect him to go well. Karoo Lark got very good form. He also runs on. So you'll probably find Seamaster out at the front, lobbing along. And um, uh, the trouble is, you've got a horse like Truly Wicked, likes to go to the front too. So he'll get up there and want to run. And Arrows Mark goes well on the poly. Looks like he'll get up there and want to run. Kasura, it's, it's going to be a, all according to pace this race. Gavel Strike comes into the race. Don't leave him out of anything. Third run after a rest. Uh, he is drawn wide, but he's got quite a good profile and it looks like he'll go well here. So Seamoss is a top choice, but a, a weak top choice. I'm also going to throw in Star of Joburg. Uh, I like this horse's chances on the poly and uh, Luke Ferraris gets the ride on him for draw one. So that might help. Race seven, Mary rated uh, 89, and this is a 1200 meter. And here I like General Franco. Third run after a rest, everything in his favor. Anton Marcus, drawn one. Uh, they put the earmuffs on him. Uh, lots to like about him. The big danger has got to be Damasio. Dion Sampson comes all the way from Joburg to ride this horse, or maybe he's there with Louis, I don't know. But he's uh, it's an old school Sampson and Corson. And um, it, it's very interesting to see the jockey booking. His profile is very good course and distance, four from nine. He's won on, over the 1200 meters here on the track. So he's um, in form, gets a good jockey, lots to like about him. Masheri, one from two course from distance. Warren rides it for his family. So you'd expect that to go well. And uh, Transonic, very well course and distance suit and gets Hewitson as well. Race eight, Mary rated uh, 79, 1400 meters. And uh, the right horse has got to be good time guy. Looks absolutely perfectly made for this race. Goes well on the poly. Last run was a very, very good run. Stratum gets a ride on it. So uh, they 
gets a two and a half claim that's going to help it's got 59 on its back and wherever you go through the form uh, the only horse that's got a chance on form is sovereign soldier seems to have a very good chance on form will run well here but there are a number of others that have chances if you don't bank a good time guy king's crusade uh, gets the blinkers and um, despite winning last time they put the blinkers on him warren stays with him so warren obviously said to them listen put the blinkers on this horse not doing his best chatterton's keeper uh, two good runs gets a one and a half claimer and then uh, a master of destiny is ready and he's got some very good collateral form master of destiny in this type of race um, i expect him to go well with luke ferraris and brass bell might be a big outsider for your quartet the last quartet worth putting in and brazil nut shows pace but good time guy does look like the right horse uh, if you look past him maybe master of destiny uh, king's crusade sovereign soldier all in all, one of those cards all depends on pace, how the races are run, whether the guys get to the front and hook up, uh, or they uh, are pressed in front and there goes a genuine pace, gives the horses behind a chance to catch him, and how the track is running. But it should be standard, should be okay, Every, there hasn't been a lot of rain or anything, and uh, you should be able to win from anywhere if the pace is genuine. So, let's hope for a good day from me, James Goodman, and the whole Interbet team. Uh, as I said, you must go to the Vegas site, it's called Vegas, the live games, and you can find every game you'd ever want to play, and some very good games. Have a good one.